As we await the start of the NBA season, we await to hear what final trades, free agency acquisitions will transpire before the season tips off on October 18th. And for the Chicago Bulls, a team most likely to not be making any final transactions before the start of the year, as most insiders around the organization believe the roster is likely all but intact, we can't help but speculate on what potential trades we would like to see the Bulls make before opening night, at least as it relates to players who are likely on the trading block or who have been in trade rumors for some time now. And although I've talked about potential trade candidates the Bulls should be interested in, like Boyan Bogdanovich, Jordan Clarkson, Jakob Pertl, Buddy Heald, guys that would fit a need on the Bulls roster as it relates to interior defense and shooting, there is one guy that we have not talked about as much on the channel who has been in trade rumors for all but two to three years now, and that's the Indiana Pacers' Miles Turner. So in today's video, we're going to be discussing what a trade for Miles Turner would look like and whether it makes sense for the Bulls based on what they would have to give up to get him. So what's going on, everyone? You're listening to Bulls Central here. Hope you're all doing well. Now, for Miles Turner, is one of these interesting players in the NBA in that he's a pretty good player, a player that I actually think is very under rated and yet he's been on the trading block for near three years now but somehow still hasn't been moved there has been reported interest in him from various teams throughout this time but a deal has never been made so it leads you to believe how valued is miles turner in this league if the pacers don't want him but at the same time it doesn't seem like many teams are interested in acquiring him otherwise it would have been done by now it's also possible the pacers simply overvalue turner and expecting a big haul for him but it's getting to the point now where He's close to becoming a free agent. He's going to be on an expiring contract for this upcoming season worth $18 million. And if the Pacers don't find a trade for him, they're going to lose him for nothing when he becomes an unrestricted free agent next offseason because I really can't see the Pacers extending him. Not when they have been openly trying to trade this guy for years now. So you would have to think that because Turner is on an expiring contract and because the Pacers want to get something in return for him, you'd have to think that you might be able to get Miles Turner at a discount if you're a team looking for an elite rim protector. Now for the Bulls, I mean, we've talked about it ad nauseum, but the biggest deficiencies that they have on this team are rim protection and shooting. I mean, that's really been known all offseason. That's why it was a surprise when you saw the free agency moves that the Bulls made really didn't address either of those areas. Now, Miles Turner has been linked to the Bulls in trades in the past, albeit just some minor rumors. Again, it seems like Miles Turner has been linked to quite a few teams when it comes to trade rumors. But for the Bulls, there is no denying his fit and how great it would be for the Bulls for what they need. Even though he's primarily a center and the Bulls already have a starting center in Vucevic and a backup center in Andre Drummond, so I'll talk about that in a little bit. I can already see in the comments right now, how are you gonna bring in Turner when you already have Vuce? Don't worry, I will get there. But as for Miles Turner and his value, and what it would take for the Bulls to get him. Well, let's first just look at Miles Turner as a player because I think people sometimes forget that he's only 26 years old and entering his prime. It's not like this would be a player who's in his 30s who could be on the decline soon. Turner, although not a great perimeter defender, he doesn't have the best lateral footwork, and although he's never made an all-defensive team, he's still one of the best shot blockers in the game of basketball. Leading the league in blocks two of the last four seasons, he's actually second in the NBA among active players in terms of blocks per game, with the exception of last season because he was injured for a good portion of it and didn't qualify for a lot of stat metrics, but with the exception of last season, he has finished top 15 in the league in defensive rating over the last three seasons, again prior to last season, also top 20 in defensive win shares in those same three seasons and top 10 in defensive box plus minus. Now, what's also been a positive in Turner's game that has improved steadily over the course of his career, which I guess you could say is also just a byproduct of today's NBA, but that's that he's become a net positive with his outside shooting. For a guy coming into the league not known for his outside shooting, really not known for his shooting in general, went from averaging 0.23 attempts per game in his rookie year to now averaging 4.4 attempts on 33% shooting. And I know some will say 33% shooting, dude, that's good to you. Well, it is when you factor in the elite level interior defense that he provides and also so when you compare it to Vucevic, who is considered an outside shooting big man, that only shot 31% on the same volume as Miles Turner did. And it's more so the fact that his three-point shooting has continued to improve and on higher volume over the course of his career. It's an added element to his game that he's good enough at that defenses have to pay attention to. So unlike a guy like Rudy Gobert, who is an insanely good rim protector and he can score in the paint, he is a non-factor behind the arc, which doesn't help with floor spacing. And for Miles Turner, a great defender in the paint, actually a solid scorer in the paint as well and high efficiency, is good enough to also space the floor when he's able to knock down threes at a 33% clip. 
Miles Turner also gives you some solid rebounding. I wouldn't say he's a high level rebounder by any means, especially given he's a center and you would expect a little more than seven rebounds per game, but he can give you seven rebounds a game. Again, Bulls need added rebounding and he's also slowly improved his offensive rebounding, something else the Bulls need as they were one of the worst teams in the league on second chance points or even just creating second chance opportunities in general because of their poor offensive rebounding as a team. Now, the downsides, yes. First and foremost, Turner most recently has been getting the injury bug. He missed near half the season for the Pacers last year due to injury, which if you're the Bulls, you're trying to avoid injuries at all costs given everything that you went through last season and continue to go through this season as Lonzo Ball is still recovering from his injuries. But Miles Turner, yes, despite the improved shooting, isn't the most gifted player offensively like he's gonna probably get you between 12 and 14 points per game and to be honest if you were to join the Bulls he's probably gonna get less than that as he'll be seeing fewer attempts with Levine and DeRozan taking the bulk of shots but that's not what we really need Turner for we need him as that interior defensive specialist who isn't going to let guys get easy buckets in the paint like we saw last season and the other downside, Turner isn't really the best playmaking big man. Like for Vucevic and his flaws, he's actually a very smart passer on offense, one of the best passing bigs in the league. Miles Turner is definitely not that. You'll be lucky to get an assist per game out of him. So the question is, based on what we know of Miles Turner as a player, his strengths and weaknesses, what he would bring to the Bulls roster and his general fit with the rest of the group, especially as it relates to the other players' timelines, how much do you value Miles Turner and what you would have to give up to get him? Because as of right now, it's pretty unclear how front offices are valuing Miles Turner because despite all the trade rumors, nothing has been confirmed as a package that was offered from a given team for Turner and whether it was declined by the Pacers or a counteroffer was given where the team felt that it was just too much. Now, first and foremost, you have to look at the Pacers as a franchise and what direction they're going in today. A team that is not going to be very good, most likely a lottery team, a team that they traded away two of their better players players in DeMontis Sabonis and Malcolm Brogdon, either for younger players or draft picks. They do have some intriguing pieces for the future with Tyrese Halliburton, Chris Duarte, the picks they just recently acquired in the aforementioned trades, but the fact of the matter is they're not going to be very good and probably looking to tank for a chance at Victor Wibanyama. So if the Pacers are in fact going to be looking to trade Turner, they're going to want something they can build on something that fits their current rebuilding timeline. So when I hear people saying we should just trade Vucevic for Miles Turner straight up, you need to step back and realize the Pacers would never do this to bring in a 32-year-old Vuce who is also an expiring contract. Trading one expiring contract for another and a player who wouldn't fit their timeline whatsoever is not going to be something they're going to be interested in. Now, maybe you throw in the Portland first round pick in the deal along with Vucevic and maybe they would consider it, but at that point, that's too much of a trade for Turner because at the end of the day, I still think Vucevic is a better all-around player than Miles Turner is despite all the criticism that Vooch gets and despite some of the dumb top 10 centers of the league rankings you've seen some media outlets come out with in which Vooch was left off of the top 10 list while Miles Turner was like eight or nine. Yeah, I like Miles Turner a lot but he's not a better player than Vucevic. Not now, anyway. Obviously, that's going to change as Vuce gets older, but for the time being, I'm not trading Vuce and a first-round pick for Turner. That just wouldn't make sense at all for the Bulls. So then you might ask, well, how would a trade for Turner even work if you're not including Vucevic? Because you can't have both guys on the roster. They can't coexist given their positions, and neither player should be coming off the bench. They're too good to be coming off the bench. And to that, I respond, why not? Who's to say that two of them, the two of them, cannot coexist on the same roster? You know, people always talk about the concept of today's NBA being positionless basketball. You'll have guys playing multiple positions depending on certain schemes or styles of offense. You'll have big 6'9", 6'10", guys running the offense playing the quote-unquote point forward, while you'll also have guys standing at 6'5", 6'6", playing small ball center. We saw that last season when Derek Jones Jr. was playing center when Vucevic was out with COVID. Yes, both Vucevic and Turner are centers. With their skill sets and IQ, they're able to be more than just that. We've actually seen both players playing power forward at various points in their careers. Miles Turner played with technically another center in DeMontis Sabonis, who was a better rebounder and a better overall shooter, not necessarily an outside shooter, but a better shooter than he was. Like you're telling me between Turner and Vucevic, they wouldn't be able to adapt and adjust to each other's games and perhaps take on a role in a new position. It would be different if we were suggesting the Bulls should try and pair Vucevic with someone like Sabonis, another player who has a very similar skill set to him. Elite level rebounding, strong offensive player, a highly skilled passer. Like obviously the two of them together would not make sense because their skills wouldn't complement each other. Whereas Miles Turner actually makes up for the skills in which Vucevic lacks on the defensive end and vice versa. Vooch possesses strengths compared to Turner as it relates to his superior rebounding and passing 
over him. So I think these two players could coexist and complement each other nicely as a front court do. And you know what? If it doesn't work out, the experiment proves to be a failure and really they clash together on the court. Well, guess what? They're both on expiring contracts and you don't have to commit to either of them long term. And you could even look to trade one of them by the deadline if things are really looking dire. So the Vooch Turner front court duo aside, if we're not trading Vucevic, then what would a trade for Turner look like that would be enticing enough of an offer for the Pacers that they would bite on? Well, remember, the Pacers are looking for young players and draft capital. You also have to make the money come close to Turner's $18 million salary. So in this instance, I think a trade that would be intriguing enough for the Pacers would be Kobe White, Tony Bradley, just really for salary filler purposes, Derek Jones Jr., yes, for salary filler, but Derek Jones Jr. is actually a good asset, especially on a team-friendly deal that he's on. All of that along with the Bulls' first-round pick from Portland, which is lottery protected. I honestly think that would be enough to get the deal done, given the Pacers are getting a young asset in Kobe White and a first round pick, albeit lottery protected, the best that it's gonna be is the 15th pick. So for a guy who was on an expiring deal, isn't gonna be a part of their long-term future, that's a decent haul. And for the Bulls, I mean, look, I know people are always coming at me in the comments saying, why am I always including Kobe in any trade packages? Why are you a Kobe hater? I'm not a Kobe hater, guys. It's the fact that he's the most likely trade candidate on this roster that actually has some value and is the odd man out among all the Bulls guards. Between Zach Levine, Lonzo Ball, Ayo Desumu, Goran Dragic, and Kobe White, who would the Bulls move among these guys to create more space in the backcourt? Not only that, but Kobe's also on an expiring contract. He's going to be a restricted free agent this coming offseason. Based on the construction of this roster, he's most likely not going to be extended an offer beyond his rookie deal from the Bulls. So rather than losing him for nothing, try and get something out of it. And so the Bulls, they move on from Kobe White, they move Tony Bradley, which is really whatever because his contract is also expiring, it's a low dollar contract, he's not really that great of a player. Derek Jones Jr., who I actually like on this Bulls team, but you need another player to make the money work. But Derek Jones Jr., who was out of the rotation for a portion of the season, he's not gonna be a critical piece for this crew. Whereas Miles Turner would be. Giving up that first round pick hurts, especially when the Bulls have such little first round picks to work with, with all that they traded for Vucevic and DeRozan. But look, Miles Turner is going to command a first round pick, especially from a team who is rebuilding it. And especially with how teams are just throwing around first round picks for players like hotcakes these days. And it's not like this is an unprotected pick or a top five protected pick. The best the pick is going to convey is the 15th pick. For the Bulls who are looking to win now and actually keep up with all the aggressive moves made by the rest of the Eastern Conference, you can't be worrying about mid to late first round picks when it can bring you a high level player that fits a serious need on your roster. The big downside for making a trade like this and getting Miles Turner is that it would impede Patrick Williams' development because Miles Turner is going to get the start over Patrick. I know some Bulls fans don't want to hear that, but the fact of the matter is, Bulls don't have a lot of time to wait around right now for developing their younger players. Not saying they shouldn't prioritize it at all. Developing guys like Patrick, Io, and Dalen Terry is still very important, but if you're bringing in Miles Turner, you're not doing it to bring him off the bench. You're going to do it to improve the team for the now, and you can still integrate Patrick into the rotation enough to get him the minutes needed for a year three former number four overall pick. But, but either way, I want to hear what you guys think of this trade for Miles Turner. What's the most you would be willing to give up to get him? Let me know in the comments, and as always, be sure to subscribe if you're a Bulls fan, as I do post daily Bulls content. Thanks again for tuning in, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.